guys, welcome to your YouTube channel where we talk all about gate exam and we are studying DBMS. We have understood the concept of normalization so far, the very first unit where we have seen why denormalized data needs to be normalized and how the, con the concept of or the various types of normal forms are utilized in doing that. The various types of keys, the, the candidate key, the concept of functional dependency and so on. Right now is the time that we practice some of the previous year gate questions. So let's practice some of the questions which have been formulated over the concept of normal forms, keys, etc. Okay. So in this particular video, I am come up. I have come up with a uh, question from the gate 2013. It was the linked question. Uh, two questions were asked for two two marks each, and common data was there. Okay. Now we don't have this particular format, but of course, this question will let you understand that how the two things can be asked from the same data. So we have a relation R which have eight attributes A to H, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. The fields of R contain only atomic values. That means none of the field, none of the attribute have multi-valued attribute. Okay. The given FD set is right here which have five FDs. It's a set of FD so that F plus is exactly the set of FD that hold for R. Okay. You understand each and everything. None of the term is new for you. You have understood the concept of F plus. You have understood what is atomic values. The very first question says, how many candidate keys does the relation R have? So it is not asking you what are the candidate keys. Rather, it is asking you how many. So this question, if it comes in today's time, in today's gate exam, it could be easily put up as a numeric cons uh, numeric based question. It need not to give the options also. You just put a dash and you have to fill in what is the right answer. Correct? So th that is the first question. Next question is the relation R is which normal form? Okay, so now you see the idea. We anyway for finding out the uh, normal form of the relation, what you are supposed to do at first is finding out the author candidate key so that you know what are the key attributes, what are the non-key attributes, and you know what are the partial dependency, what is transitive, what is violation of BCNF, right? So anyway, for doing this, you have to compute this answer, correct? Now the good thing is this first step is also giving you two marks, right? So let's quickly solve this question and if at all you have to uh, refer the question either you can do this standard gate 2013 question paper referee or you can come back to the video you know just go back refer this and start solving. I'm going to wipe this out to solve the question okay. So I have got the data on the screen okay on the board. So let's solve the very first question where we have to find out all the candidate keys possible. So we'll start uh, straight from that. You have the relation with these many attributes and this is the functional dependency set. The very first important key point is look out for all the attributes whether they are present in your dependency set or not. Okay. So let's check with the we have all of them. So we have A, B, C. Do we have D? No. E? Yes. F? Yes. G? Yes. H? Yes. Okay. So D is not part of the given functional dependency set which simply means whatever keys will be formed, D will have to be augmented. Okay, so whatever set of attribute is capable of determining all the relation R minus D because D cannot be found out, right? We cannot compute the value of D from here. None of the closure of attribute will give you D because it's not even present, correct? So let's start from the very first and we have understood that D is missing, okay? So once D is missing, it has to be augmented, okay? It has to be augmented. So from the way for the very first, I'll start with the A plus, okay, because by observing at the functional dependency set, I can see that A is determining multiple attributes. So let's take the A plus, it gives me A, it gives me B, C, B gives me F, H, so F and H, okay, and then F gives you G, okay, and also E. So you have got A, B, C. E, F, G, H, everything but not D and we have understood D will not be coming because it's not the part of functional dependency set. So you just have to augment to the attribute which can determine everything. That means it is determining everything from the R minus D. Okay. So for that matter, what you are supposed to do? Just augment D with this. So what does it become? It becomes a D plus and if I make it, it as A D plus you can see naturally that A B C D E F 
G and H. Everything is going to get uh, determined. So now it is determining what? It is determining exactly R. Okay. So can we say AD is key? Very much. Of course, this is one of the candidate key. So one of the candidate key here is AD. Okay. So here AD. Now the next uh, candidate key. So for that, we have already seen in our question the trick. If A is getting determined by any of the attribute, if it is dependent anywhere, so we have to look whether it is dependent. So you see here, in this function dependence, A is dependent. That means E can determine the value of A. So we simply do nothing but then we replace A by E. And then we take the ED plus. So this ED plus gives you what? It is exactly going to give you the same thing. So it's going to be E, A, B, C, D, F, G and H which is nothing but then R. So this also becomes one of the candidate key and just list it out here. So it becomes E, B. Alright? Yes. Now, C for the E. Check for the E. Whether it is a dependent somewhere. So if you see in this function dependency set, F to E, G. So that is here F to E, G. With the help of decomposition, what we can write it? We can write F to E and we can also write F to G. Correct? So that means E can be determined by F. Okay. So for that matter, I can replace this E by F. So it becomes FD plus. Okay. And with this FD plus, what do you get? You get F, E, A, B, C, B, G and H. That is nothing but then complete R. So we have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Alright. So that also becomes one of the candidate keys. So here FD. Okay, next, can you replace F by something? So if you look at this function dependency set, B2, C, F, H, that means it contains B2, F, and that means F can be replaced by B. So as we don't have much space, let me just clear this off. And here, I can see that this F gets replaced by, I mean, I'm just writing here, F is replaced by B. So this makes up nothing but then this makes up B, D plus. Okay. So B, D plus becomes what? Once again, B, F, E, A, C, D, G and H. Are we having everything? Yes, we have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Okay. So all the attributes are present. So this also becomes one of the candidate key. Now check, do we have anything else? Because we have to find out all the possible candidate keys, right? Right. So do we have B getting replaced by something? Yes, we have. And it is replaced by nothing but then the A, which have already been included, correct? So we need not to replace it again by A. It is already been done. We don't need not to make it a cyclic because it's closing here, correct? Now, anything else possible? Not at all. Okay. Somebody might think, ma'am, you always used to take the very first function dependency and used to compute that. If you are still into that mind, then you can take CH plus and you, you will notice you are not going to get anything but then CHG. So that's why I did not take this uh, separately because it's not going to give me anything but then only CHG. So it is of no use in order to find out the candidate keys in this particular question. Okay. So after if you if at all you want to try some more you can try that out but we can clearly conclude right here that we just have four uh, key candidate keys which are ad ed fd and bd and the question asks nothing but then the number of candidate keys so i think you have understood what is the right answer option b answer is four candidate keys are press quickly solve the second part of the question where the question is asking the relation r is in which normal form so the finding from the first question is that we have four candidate keys ad bd fd and ed and so i have listed out the key attribute and non key attribute for your e's which you all understand whichever attribute is part of any candidate key is a key attribute and the rest are non key attributes Right? So we do have them. Now, uh, because we know these are key attributes, these are non-key attributes, we just have to find out out of the given function dependencies, which one is partial, which one is transitive, which one is violation of BCN. Based on their nature, the normal form would be found out. Okay? So uh, for the you know, ease of the question solving, I have just listed all the FDs in such a manner 
so that's straightforward we can identify what is the nature of the functional dependency so the very first say is CH2G okay C is a non key G is a non key H is a non key so you know the non key to non key understanding is transitive dependency okay so this functional dependency becomes transitive because this is non key attribute to the non key attribute right right okay now let's check for the next one so a to bc and we all understand with the help of decomposition i have just decomposed them in two separate so that it becomes easier for you to understand what is the nature of it so it becomes a to b and it becomes a to c a and b both are key attributes so a to b is not partial dependency but both are partial part of keys they are not complete keys so what is it it is violation of bcnf what it is it is violation of bcnf okay so we have got the transitive dependency so certainly the relation is not in 3nf we also have got the violation violation of bcnf and of course because transitive dependency is there so it's not in 3nf it's not in bcnf so these options are ruled out, ruled out this one and this one correct correct we just have these two options left over now a to c part of key determining a non key straight forward from that part of key determining the non key what does it make it makes nothing but then the partial dependency everyone partial dependency and in my explanation of first normal form I straight forward explained you the very moment you find the very first partial dependency straight from that point you declare this is in this is in first normal form so the answer is right here with us that the relation is in first normal form but not in 2nf okay once you have the partial dependency it cannot be in second normal form it will be in first normal form but for our understanding we will go i mean in examination you just have to stop there don't be curious to know what are the other functional dependencies right at that point where you find the very first pd declare it is in one normal form but here in this question we will see what are the other nature okay so b to c f h again by the decomposition it becomes b to c which is again a partial dependency you can understand part of key non key okay part of key and part of key violation of b c n f violation of b c n f part of key non key partial dependency so it not only have one it has this one and this one also partial dependency now let's let's uh, check for the e to a so e to a is what it is part of key part of key violation of bcnf okay now f to eg by decomposition written in two forms f to e again violation of bcnf okay and f to g part of key and non key again nothing but then the partial dependency so the relation have a to c b to c b to h and f to g four partial dependencies so of course relation cannot be in second normal form it is only in the first normal form and of course for finding out first normal form it need not to have more than one partial dependency the very one single pd is sufficient to say it is in first normal form so answer is option number a now guys i'm going to stop this right here this video and this question but i will ask you to make a further decomposition for this relation as you know all the types of uh, dependencies present here and this is in the lowest normal form this relation r is so normalize it find out the decomposition set for it and check for the properties of the relation whether it is lossless join and dependency preserving or not what is it second normal form decomposition what is it third normal form decomposition what is it bcnf decomposition you all can do that very much okay so i will sign up right here and i will come back again with another question from the previous year gate question see you again bye bye